What is going on all you bus nuts, geeks, and enthusiasts out there? Welcome to another episode of Motor Coach World. And today, we're in Winnipeg, Canada at MCI headquarters. Let's go see what trouble we can get into. Winnipeg, Canada, sitting in a tavern, Leopold's Tavern, if I'm not mistaken. In this place, they have an entire section on their menu dedicated to different types of poutine. Scotch eggs. I've never had one before. I've always wanted to try a scotch egg. A scotch egg is breaded, a layer of sausage, a layer of breading, and the yolk. The yolk is really runny. Cheers, guys. That is really good. It's yolky. There's a hint of mayonnaise on it, which adds to the creaminess. And you got the sausage, and it finishes with the crunch on the outside. What a beautiful invention. This is poutine. This is the reason, well, one of the reasons I came to Canada. This and buses. And then what, what's yours called? Cheeseburger. Cheeseburger poutine. Yeah. And this and is pierogi. Oh, it's got three pierogies on it. So poutine is french fries deep fried in duck fat, covered in duck gravy, and cheese curds, I believe. Hello, Canada. The gravy is salty. It tastes like Thanksgiving. That's really good. The cheese curds adds the chew. Then you get the crunch of the french fry. Some of the fries start absorbing the gravy. And I actually don't mind that it's soggy because it's flavorful soggy. You guys ever come to Canada? Definitely get this. The poutine, check. Tomorrow, we're gonna drag race some buses. Thank you, MCI. The next day. All right, the flags. Oh, oh my gosh. You gotta wait for it to come back again. Dude, you guys shouldn't have. <laughs> Okay guys, so we're here at the Winnipeg Motor Coach Industry Production Facility. Is that an accurate way of calling yep. this place? I have Brent Danielson. Chief Engineer Product Planning. And you basically design the coaches, you're the designer. I used to, I still have a hand in it. I don't do the heavy lifting anymore, but we kind of map out what we think the market wants and customers want and try to make it happen, yeah. And then we have Brent Maitland. Head of the private sector for the company. And. Uh, these guys are going to get me a tour of the place, and I heard we're going to be doing some fun things. What are we doing today? Well, Whatever we, we try normal. to keep it under under wraps, <laughs> but we're going to have a little head-to-head -head with some uh, a diesel versus electric coach and see how that goes, and then just look at some of the stuff we have here because we're adding around our proto shop, so some prototypes, early models, the first J3500. So obviously, I'm not going to be able to show you guys everything. In fact, they just took me to a secret lab and I got to see some really cool stuff happen, but I'm not going to share with you because that's top secret. Um, you'll just have to start your own YouTube channel if you want to be invited to things like this. But today, I think uh, from, from what I've been hearing, I'm going to get the drag race a couple of coaches on the test track. You will. And then before that, we're going to take a look at how the production process at MCI goes. We're gonna see some of the 
buses get built today. Is that right? That's right. Yeah. Awesome. Well, let's go. So this is the start of what used to be the D shell line. It was all built on this side of the factory here. It was built in an upper half and a lower half. And those two halves would be joined up almost at the end to become a full self-supporting frame, then put on a flatbed to Pamina. And now this the D, D line's been decommissioned. This is all now J sub-assembly parts. This used to be something radically different than what you see here. This is, yeah, this is the engine cradle sits on here. So this isn't stainless, this is high strength, low alloy steel, you can tell by the color. We use this in really high stressed areas like the front and rear bogies and engine rails. Here's a finished front bogey. So again, high strength, low alloy steel, independent front and tag suspension since 2015. Over here, you can see the rear bogey. So this is what makes up the rear suspension. You can see the tag axle portion on the rear and the drive axle would go in the front part. Really? That made a big improvement on the ride quality of the coach because it's so much stiffer due to all that structure that wants to bend like a C and that keeps it rigid so the ride quality got way better. All these roof bows and hoops you see here, we make all these parts ourselves. So the frame of a J coach is really made up by three different tubing sections. It's metric 50 by 75, 50 by 50 and 50 by 40 millimeters. So Every part in the frame you'll see is built from one of those three tube sections. That's where the axles are going to get installed. And then when it's completed that, it goes across the aisle where the engine gets installed, so powertrain. We're towards the end of the line and we'll sort of start over there and then walk the line in the order that it's finished. But these are some cooling packages here. Modine, there's some E-fans that come sub-assembled. Transmissions, the Cummins X12 that we use right now. You can see this coach is coming down now. They just put the axles in it on this lift table. This is one of the stations that was moved. It used to be on the other side of those walls. From here, it's gonna get dropped down and they'll push it across to install the powertrain. So. This is where it all begins. This is sort of the, uh, I guess, southwest corner of the building. In here, you'll see a bunch of fixtures, uh, basically sub-assembly fixtures, taking the square and rectangular tubing sections that we cut over there and turning them into modules. So we start with the center lower. This is an example of the center lower here. Oh, that looks so this is your baggage truss section. We'll marry this to a rear bogey, a front bogey, and that kind of becomes the first building block of the coach assembly. This is the center tunnel. This is kind of the heart of the coach. Okay, that's where all the harnesses go. All the harnesses, power steering lines, HVAC lines, pneumatic lines, everything is here. Interesting fun fact, this is like the first job I did when I started in 1994. Oh my gosh. Is there a little bit of PTSD or well, is it all, oh, it's all It's all good memories, yeah, I'm kind of, I'm kind of Surprised, intrigued that it hasn't really changed much <laughs> in that long time. But this is the uh, front bogey before it gets put in. So the next coach that's going to get built will take this front bogey section. You can see it's all stainless except for the really high strength requirements like uh, front and rear suspension. And these are this is ink primer that we'll put on it. It's, it's kind of tight. So this is now all welded. You'll see it's on dollies that they use to push it through. They'll change the dollies once it becomes a self-supporting frame but essentially it's on these dollies up until it goes to join up. So there's a roof frame sitting on top of it. The roof frame is welded here in this fixture. So you'll kind of see them hanging all over. There's another one sitting here. 
So again, this is the rear bogey section that would have been welded onto that center lower we saw. Here's the engine rails we saw earlier. Those two halves are now joined together and welded. There's the sidewall frame fixture. So eventually it'll do 40 foot coaches, 35 foot coaches, it's all that's modular. Great. Mold it there, overhead cranes will pick it up and put it there. So that's kind of the next coach waiting to go into join up where they'll take two sidewalls, that lower center, a front and back frame and a roof and kind of weld them all together. Now, when does all this happen? Are they, are they on break right now? Right here, yeah, they're on break right now. Okay, okay. Yeah, that's, that's why it's good. quiet. That's why it, it'll that. happen right up here in this fixture. This is like a big clamshell fixture where they'll roll that center lower section in. They'll support it on dollies to the right elevation. They'll bring the sidewalls in. They'll bring the front and rear roof frame in, or front and rear frame in the roof, and weld it all together. And that frame at the end is essentially what comes out of the assembly jig. So it's this fully self-supported J-coach frame in about four stations, just literally, you know, 100 feet back to that. They'll so put it on- From nothing to that. From nothing to that. 100 feet. In 100 feet. And opposite baggage floors, all of our baggage floors are our okay, composite. Okay. Yeah, I like the flat. I like, I hated the corrugated. The corrugated aluminum, hard oh, that knees. killed my yeah. knees. Yeah. So this, so this is the frame where it comes out of the joint up picture. They'll do some weld grinding in this, in this area. This could be a J coach frame, it could be a CRT frame, it could be a 35 foot frame. Oh, that's Could be cool. anything here, right? This is a universal jig. At what point do you decide this is gonna be a J or this is gonna be a CRT? Uh, 20, well, 20 weeks before it goes online. We oh, know exactly, oh, wow. this customer placed an order or we put a stock coach in, we know what we're gonna build. So this is where I would sit. I recognize this spot all too well. So from here on in, they're they're essentially bolting on parts now, or there's no welding that happens anymore. At this point, the frame is done. The frame is totally done. It's a self-supporting frame. It's just putting the finishing touches on it. And that happens within 100 feet of each other. Pretty much. That's really cool. Fuel tank is in. This is a metal tank we're using now. The Shaw DEF tank is here that everybody loves so much. That's the inverter for a 110 and battery charger at the same time. So, so what happens here, the rear cap gets installed first. Uh, the brim strips go on top of these uh, pieces of insulation. And then the roof skin will actually sit down on top of the brim strip. So it's just like a shingled roof. You don't get that perspective from the ground, but the roof skin overlaps this, so water sheds down here. And then the front cap goes on last. So you're sequencing it so that the wind doesn't catch any leading edges. So the front cap goes first and so on. These automatic riveting machines here, they'll drill and rivet all the holes that go through the drip rail. So essentially the cap is on, it's riveted with a couple of seams of rivets. The drip rail is really just cosmetic. It's here mostly to channel the water away that comes off the roof, but that brim strip underneath there is really the water barrier, right? So it's sitting underneath this roof skin. This also hangs the windows. That's why it's made out of aluminum. It's got a little hook in here that the windows will hook onto. Yeah, yeah. And then they'll cut out the roof hatches. So that, uh, that skin over there, that aluminum roof skin, it gets, gets dropped on top and then they use rivets at the back to hold it. They pneumatically stretch it and they rivet it as they go along. So the drip rails kind of keep the roof skin in place, but it's also under tension as they do that. Okay. Yeah, so as they're doing the roof, they've got people working down below okay. inside the coach. So they're starting, you can see the lavatory tank is in there already now. Yeah, you can see they've got the floor joints. They're starting to put compound on to make them nice and smooth. And then from here, the uh, windows and the seats are loaded on top of those, those green gantries, which are normally slid back here. So they'll load them up with material they need. The coach itself comes through from the other direction. They slide the gantries on both sides and they have zero gravity lifts up there. So they put the seats in through the windows first 
roughly in the right spot. Then they'll go and hang the windows using the same um, zero gravity lifts. That's a lot easier than carrying the seats Which up is the the what steps. they used to do when I started. <laughs> they used to literally have genie lifts and lift them through windows. So quite a bit more ergonomically friendly. <laughs> so when it's done, they retract these gantries and they push the coach sideways. And what used to happen here is they would then put the powertrain in that, in that spot and the axles and all that's now been moved to the other side. So that coach is essentially going to go from that spot all the way to where we were before. A lot of that has been designed out for safety, ergonomics, so and a better environment too. to work in. Uh -huh. We've been using box cutters or knives. Okay. You know, that we've yeah. tried to eliminate that from production that's at all. Awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. See how this uses all the same window? Yeah. This, on the J coach, that's a unique window. They yeah. It in. Yeah. The D coach, same windows, and it's just a styling liner. So is that a separate panel that you cut out, or is that one piece with the styling line? You in. cut that off, and it's okay. Uh, it's a totally different panel. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. okay. And, and this will just become paint. We'll paint ah, and and that's why that divot is so correct. Okay, correct. so you were to paint. And, and internally styling, we call this the water pole. The water pole. It falls from there to here. Uh, yeah. All the way through the top. Very sleek. Little different step wall design on the D. inside of a 45 CRT. So this is essentially like a J, but it's got the mid-coach wheelchair lift door, parcel racks, open cords, no doors. This will be the, but again, all, all off the same basic common platform. A little different too, we don't have a theater seating in this model, we see it's flat all the way to the front. This is, flat. is this a dash mount? Correct, yeah, the dash will sit on here. Does that change between the J and the D? Uh, this is pretty similar. The dash itself is different. Right. The wiper motors are the same. Okay. So everything underneath is the same. Yeah. They're putting on sidewalls here. The sidewalls drop into a channel. It's a one-piece uh, fiberglass mold. And essentially the same mold, they just cut off which curved end they don't need to make it left or right. It's designed to slip to grow and expand or expand and contract with the coach. And then it's like a car, you know, A post, B post, C post. Yep, yep, yep. Same, same terminology. So again, this is a J coach. In front of it is a CRT. So next model line, secondary lab tank you see sitting there. Yeah, accelerator pedals are in there now. That, this has racks in it, it has the uh, doors on it already. So you can see this is a J45 with an X12, and there's a J35 with an L9 in it, right side by side. Okay. Essentially in this spot, this is all powertrain. They'll start the coach, test it, and put it on its own power, and then put wheels on it. So the station in front of this one, you can see the Coney lifts there, they're putting wheels on, wheels and tires in that spot. You can see all the guards on these two, there's guards on the axle area in case there's any kind of an air leak. So guys, at this point that we're standing, the buses drive themselves. They are under their own power. The engine's in, the wheels are in, everything's ready to go. And basically after this point, it's all cosmetic, exterior, is that right? Or? Yeah, even things like uh, they don't put the real mirrors on until after they do the, the first coat of paint. So oh. Some of the things are deliberately left off. Small access doors for- Oh, the, the handles. Oh, okay. Handles, all that kind of stuff, right? How long does it take to, from beginning to end to produce- Depends on line rate. So probably about uh, five to six weeks okay. with our current line rate. By the time you get all the paint done, all the testing done. So- What was it pre-COVID? Uh, it was probably about four or five weeks. I'd say we're still lagging a little bit, okay. mostly due to material shortages yeah, still. Yeah, yeah. But okay. getting better all the time. So four or five weeks from beginning to end is average. Yeah, and typically 20 weeks lead time in front of that to place the order, bring the material in, and get ready to build it. So okay. you're looking at about half a year okay. from start to finish. Fast Track is like a stock coach, so okay, if we so don't- that's not a company. Correct. Yeah, okay. if we don't have a customer order, we'll keep the production line smoothed out by inserting the stock coaches. Yeah. This is what the customer name would be, but because this is fast track, this is just stock. Correct. We, you know, we try to, I guess, intervene if we can sell a coach and add customer touches to it, like a 360 camera. Mm -hmm. We might try and intercept that through the build process. 
so you don't have to start from scratch again, or we can do those kinds of add-ons at the service center. I would imagine Peoria Charter gets a lot of the fast track coaches, because I know we don't really, we just buy them ad hoc. Yeah. We yeah. don't plan them out. Yeah. And there are a lot of companies, which, which is more? Are there, do you find that there's more companies that place them on order, or more companies it's that? Of, it, it's about half and half, 60-40, okay. it's the okay. either way, but roughly about half and half. Like, We're more knee-jerk. We need buses! And you're like, all right, pull some exactly. fast trip. It's good to have some inventory available. Yeah, yeah. Cool. You see the temporary mirrors they put on? They so don't damage you. them during the paint cycle. They just take them off. What, what's the purpose of the mirror even having them in the fast trip? Because you have to drive them. Oh, okay, you have to okay. drive them through the process now. What's going on So here? we just are at the tail end of a coach that was water tested. They'll drive in. These arms uh, can go up and down. And essentially, it's 10 or 15 minutes of water. It gets poured on the coach. We have somebody inside the coach. We check for water leaks in the baggage compartments, the whole deal. So every coach gets at least one of these tests done to them. And then these coaches are pretty much done. They're really going to be having the final work done to them. The interiors are going to get cleaned. So that's what these last few days are for. And then you can see what the coach looks like when it comes out of the paint booth. One color paint, they've already started to assemble some of the lights on them. And then they're going to go into the hot room, that uh, louvered door at the back, that's one of the two hot rooms. That's where the HVAC's tested, there's another one on the other side. Bumpers get put on, engine door, all the rest of the trim. And that's it. So we've reached the end of the line. Here's where the finished product is. Very impressive process. Let's go ahead and check out, what, a 2023? 2024 MCI J4500 looks like. That new bus smell is the strongest I've ever smelled it. Yeah. By the time it gets to the display and dealership when we pick them up, it's not as prevalent. It's no, still nice, really? but this is the this is the strongest I've ever smelled the new bus smell. What goes into that? Chemicals. Chemicals. <laughs> <laughs> they should make a cologne. That feels good. I'm sure a lot of the techs have sat in this seat before, but technically I'm the first driver to ever sit in the seat of this bus. It feels good. Thank you so much, Brent Danielson, for the tour. Yeah, my pleasure. To and Brent, thank you, you Brent bet. Maitland. So I think up thank next you. is yep. lunch and then drag racing, yeah? Yes. Let's, let's, let's go drag on. race some coaches. So we're about to get to the test track and uh, we're gonna do some drag racing from with the electric versus the diesel. When I drove the Van Pool, they said that they had to tune the engine down a little bit. Yeah. Um, I think they said 30%, don't quote me on this. Has the same thing been done to this? Yeah, there's a lot more energy or torque in the motor than we could use. So the axle input is limiting how much power we can use. And how far back did you guys dial the... Uh, I, I don't know, it's probably the same range. Okay. Yeah. We try to give as much uh, power as possible just so the driver can use it if they want to but yeah the, the look and feel of you know electric versus diesel was pretty important and it's and you, you drove it I don't know if you felt a big difference but I think it's generally very similar you know you can't go over it's a ZF drive axis you can't go over their their maximum input threshold so otherwise you'd break the yeah then you start wear and tear on it and and is that part of the reason why you would dial back that's the, the only reason oh that's the only that's, reason. The, that's okay. the main, we're limited by the oh, drive axle input okay. okay threshold otherwise the motor would be too powerful yeah. for the so before the race starts you think we could tweak it and like dial the engine <laughs> yeah, up <that's> <laughs> I need, I need that edge. <laughs> yeah. It's all right. It's all right. All right. We'll see if we can knock her out again. Over in white, we've got the MCI J4500 diesel. Cummins X12 engine, 11.8 liters, 410 horsepower, 1,450 pound-feet of torque. And over here, we've got the electric zero-emission J4500 charge running Siemens Alpha 2, 
max rating 3300 or a little north of that pound feet of torque and in this that equates to about 402 or so horsepower vroom, vroom, vroom. Straight's commentary. Well, I, you know, I just use what my mama taught me when I was a kid. You know, just got to put pedal to metal and not give up. So, uh, post-race commentary. Uh, what was your strategy? Well, I guess the better man won. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, there's always the argument about comfort versus speed. Yeah, yeah. So now we're gonna switch coaches. I'm gonna drive the diesel, and Bruce's gonna hop on the electric, and uh, we'll see if it's the man or the machine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're in the diesel now. And we're gonna see if the results change. This is so much fun. Okay, get everything set up. Brakes, drive, good to go. Definitely a much slower acceleration. I'm getting smoked. I'm totally losing this one. <laughs> Electric wins again. <laughs> so next up, we're going to do something I've always wanted to do, which was drive that 60-foot articulated transit bus. Let's go have some more fun. Weight-wise, is this heavier than this? I think it is. Most likely, I yeah, don't have to. I don't okay. need to okay. but I okay. think it is. Yeah. Okay. I think it's forty-nine thousand pounds. Yeah, yeah, because we have a lot of battery packs on there. That's yeah. forty-nine thousand, and this is forty-two. Okay, okay, that and would the, make sense. And the electric in, in the J is roughly fifty-five hundred pounds heavier than the equivalent diesel. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. And this is heavier than the equivalent transit right. diesel, also. All right, so we're gonna switch spaces, switch spots. All right, I'm driving the articulated. Wow, I've always wanted to drive one of these. Oh, there you go. Oh, man. Oh, let's see. Oh, getting in this thing is definitely different. Yeah, there's a pair box with me. I'm driving an articulated bus. I can't believe it. Wow, this has been, a, this has been on my bucket list for so long. All right. Aerodynamics, seatbelt, definitely important. Yeah. I love this door. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah this is um, the, the glass would slide, and, but this one doesn't have it. But okay. this would be your security. Little, for, little. Yeah. Outfold. Yeah. Good. The highway bus has got the stairs going that way. Oh, there's definitely a delay. It's got the delay, yeah. yeah. I, can't, I can't take it off. No, no, I get it. This my bus talk to me yeah and driving a transit you can hear it you hear every noise and i want that i, I like that uh, what are you what are we hearing that um the whining yeah okay so you in the center axle each um draw each axle has each wheel has a, has an electric drive on its own so the whining you're hearing is is actually the drive the drive motors okay on the center axle 
It's a nice sound. Yeah, yeah. It's I, I ever since I was a kid when I rode the bus, I I, uh, I look like, forward like to that. hearing this. Yeah. Just oh, this is fun. I've yeah. never. Yeah. I've yeah. always wanted to do this. Yeah. All right. If it doesn't want to go, then we, then it'll stop, and then we'll just we'll just override it. Okay. Oh my God, that's so different. Yeah. It'll be, it'll go. You got that? No problem. That's so See, cool. See, it just follows you. And we're just at that point. You hear the beeping? Yeah. Oh, that's warning, you, warning you. you. say, hey, you gotta your your center axle is too, almost at its max. Too much articulation. Yeah. And if it does go too far, it'll just shut the motor down. Okay. And then you can't rip anything apart. Okay. And in which case, I just an override switch up in here. We just hit it and gives us a second that we can clear it. All right, I'm gonna do something I've always wanted to do. There you go. Um, when we pull up to that, I'm gonna, gonna open, open the, the door. Yeah, I'm gonna pretend. <laughs> that I'm gonna play transit driver today. Yep. I would do this. Yeah. Come to a stop. And then front end rear. Oh. Yeah. This. And then you could also kneel if you wanted to. Is oh, that... kneel? Yeah. That's uh, ramp. That's yep. Cool. <laughs> okay, and then. Yeah, uh, recover it, chicken right back up on its own. I don't yeah. want to be a transit driver now. <laughs> and then you turn on the app, and away you go. Cool. Yeah. It won't move, but gotta come to a complete stop though, eh? Because it's yeah. gonna throw you forward. Right, okay. The interlock brakes will have come on before it. It's got safety. Safety, yeah. yeah. All right, so in the battle of diesel versus electric, electric definitely won uh, when it came to acceleration and torque and performance. Now, obviously, motor coaches aren't built to race each other and have speed. And if you're watching this, please don't do this uh, outside of a closed test track. MCI is supervising this entire event. But next, we're gonna test the adaptive braking of this 2024 MCI J4500. And this is the diesel one. And so what's going to happen is Brett Metland is going to take his car and we're going to follow him and he's going to slam on the brakes and I'm not. Now Brett, if I rear end you, I'm not responsible, right? I'm going to have to fight every instinct in my body from hitting that brake pedal. You see this cover here? Yeah. 99.9% .9 chance there's going to be a radar behind it. Okay. So that means you're going to have some level of the Bendix fusion system. Um, or Bendix wingman system, this is a camera. So the combination of radar and camera allows the system to be better at detecting the vehicle, what type of vehicle. So when they, when they brought the camera in, it became wingman fusion and fusion gave it the ability to detect a stationary vehicle and to emergency brake for a stationary vehicle. Before that, it still had adaptive cruise functionality. So you can set the cruise control it will recognize a moving vehicle in front of it and it will maintain the preset following distance. Mm -hmm. And if that vehicle slows, this will slow. If it speeds up, it'll speed up to whatever you set the cruise at. Mm -hmm. Okay, master switch. Yeah, I will. Master switch is on. Well, yeah, it's set, it's set at 28. Set now, set now. On the brakes. Not touch the brakes. Oh my God. Oh my goodness. I'm not touching the brakes. I'm not touching the brakes. We're slowing down. Oh. Brakes are applying. Oh. Was that Kate? you? That was not me. Kate. Wow! Oh! Oh, wow! <laughs> wow. <laughs> that was cool! I'm pushing my toes yeah. down. Bring it up, Bruce. Yeah, I know. I love it. Yeah. Um, it would smell the house up behind him. Right. Russ, <laughs> thank you so You're much. You're very welcome. It's so nice to meet you. Yeah, you also. Well, guys, we just got this transit from the west part of the city to the east part. Half an hour drive behind the wheel of this. And I loved every second of it. What an experience. You get to actually feel the coach talk back to you. All right, guys. Sorry, I couldn't... Uh, really take you guys to dinner with me. Special thanks to Lynn Marzullo, 
the marketing director for MCI, Brent Metland, um, the private sector uh, VP, um, Chris Stoddart, the uh, president of uh, New Flyer Industries and MCI. Also, special thanks to Brent Danielson, uh, who basically gave us a tour around MCI. And I just want to give a huge shout out to everyone that was involved in accommodating me on this trip. Thank you guys for following along. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Remember, if you're watching this, you are part of the motor coach world. Bye.